This is the Mobile App Minute, a weekly look at how to market your mobile app in a noisy world. Here are your hosts, Rob Woodbridge and Peggy Ann Souls. Welcome back, everybody. This is the Mobile App Minute. My name is Rob Woodbridge from Untether.tv. And I'm Peggy Ann Saltz over at Mobile Groove. All right, Peggy. So the goal of every app developer is to attract as many users as possible to their application. If you're not in that business, it's a hobby. It's not a business, which is why this is why it's so important to explore and enjoy the benefits of alternative routes to app stores. Why? Well, because although the majority of app developers may view placement in Google Play as the best way to achieve mass market reach and distribution for their Android apps, the numbers and the news tell a different story. The raft of companies out there, there are tons of them running app stores as a huge part of the wider business strategy from Amazon to Yandex and uh, actually China's counterpart to Google, which is Baidu because Google is not in China anymore, should send a clear message to app developers listening in. And that message is cast a wide net, think big, think huge. Isn't that right, Peggy? Absolutely, Rob. It's all about that. You could say size matters, but I'll say at this point, more is better. More is usually better. And when you're an app developer, more is definitely better because look at all those Android stores, those Android app stores where you could be publishing your app. And if you do it properly, you can be picking up users. And I'll get to some research later on that tells you, you know, just how much of an increase you can have. So, so let's look at the reasons why you need to list and publish in these app stores, right? Okay, so number one, discovery. We've gone over it a lot of times. It is a dilemma, it is tough. How do you rise above the noise? How do you compete? Well, it's a big problem and you can tackle it head on by making sure you publish your app in multiple app stores. And that increases your chances of exposure. It, of course, better exposure means potentially more downloads. I think it's a no-brainer here. Number two benefit is benefits actually it's the benefits you have across these alternative app stores because they have their own discovery schemes they have their own way of um, encouraging installs they have perhaps user discounts or free app programs or something to you know help you raise your profile and thirdly lastly buzz and this is the whole idea about the chance of your app being featured. We all know about the advantages of being a top app, right? It means automatic uh, stardom. You know, you're there when people come, it's the first thing they see. Well, it's the same thing here in these alternative app stores. There's less competition. Your chances of being featured, reviewed are much higher. Therefore, your chances of generating buzz are much higher. And again, your chance of reaching those all important users much higher. So as far as I can see it, Rob, you know, three reasons why you need to consider the alternative app stores, a no-brainer for me. Well, yeah, distributing through these alternative app stores, and, you know, some would say in those countries that those aren't the alternative, those are actually the mainstays, but there, you know, there are some serious benefits, as we've just described here, and many companies have had such great success doing this, publishing in alternative app stores, especially in Android. You can't do this in iOS, obviously, but there are some challenges, many challenges that this brings. Right. I mean, there's always an upside and a downside, right, Rob? I mean, <laughs> there's a lot to be gained, but you have to invest. Exactly. You have to invest here. And the investment here, good news, guys, it's time. But time is precisely the resource that you and I, Rob, probably do not have a whole lot of, right? <laughs> And and app developers, the same thing. I mean, particularly if you're an indie app developer. I mean, you're the CMO, the CIO, the CEO, and I don't know what else. Customer service, right? All rolled into one. You do not have the bandwidth for this. So that's number one. It's just time consuming. It's worth it. The rewards are worth it. It's time consuming. Another point, we're talking about multiple app stores, right? So they each have their own way, the way they want to have their screenshots. Maybe they have the way they want to have their description. Or their images, you know, they all work in their own way. This is this is a this is variety being the spice of life, but maybe also the headache you face. So these are the reasons why you need to have, in my view, some help. So either you have staff of people, right, uh, or you go to companies, and there are some excellent companies out there offering services to help you on this. And uh, that's where a company, for example, like Code and Go, comes in. Uh, they can take the heavy lifting out of this and help you focus on your business. Code and Go, which you might remember, was a company that contributed its insights to my everything guide for mobile apps book, is an app store management and distribution service. 
It helps app devs and publishers expand the reach of their apps into more app stores and manage those stores from a single dashboard. Really key. So it's, it's, it's breadth, but it's also simplicity. And um, in practice, Code and Go sets up developer accounts, manages submissions, handles updates, runs promotions, and gives you consolidated reporting on behalf of its um, dev and publisher customers. You can have consolidating reporting across over 30 app stores. And it has plans starting at less than $1 per store. So Code and Go can also support small, mid-sized, and large publishers alike. And as I mentioned, the company, uh, specifically JT Klepp and Chris Jones, who founded the company, they also shared their insights around alternative app stores, the reasons why you need to publish your app there, how you can do it. That's all in the Everything Guide to Mobile Apps book I wrote. So if you have a copy or you're thinking of ordering one, well, you can read more there. All right. And if you are focused on China, which I think that you should be, I mean, Apple is focused on China. Amazon is focused on China. The world world is focused on China. And we know that games uh, and certain apps really, really, really do well, especially from the West. Uh, there's a huge market there. And it is basically the wild, wild West when it comes to app stores. There's no one dominant store there. Uh, so you have to go to an alternative app store because the main one, which is Google Play, is not there. Absolutely. It's, it, it's, uh, it's wild, wild West, right? There's a lot of opportunity. A lot of fragmentation. I was amazed when I was doing the Appanomics book to find out how many app stores there are, there are there. And also social networks, which are also, again, alternative platforms, you know, ways to get to those users. Uh, you know, in China, it's 500 plus and counting. Uh, quite a lot to look at. Again, you might want to conserve your energy there and, and focus, of course, and I'll get to that in a moment. Um, it's really important to understand the app store landscape in China, particularly if you are a gaming app, because they are, you know, they're making tracks there. So, so uh, in case you want to just get a sort of a crash course, I think it's really useful to take a look at the list of the top Chinese app stores. This comes via AppFlood, which is a mobile advertising and cross-promotion company network. And uh, it went through and listed, as I said, some of the top alternative app stores. And uh, as you can see, there's quite a few. So if you're focusing on China, Absolutely. You have to look at alternative app stores. There really is no other alternative to alternative app stores. No pun intended there really, Rob. But the key takeaway here is basically submitting your app to an alternative app store. It helps with downloads. So even if it's not about China, it's about reach, it's about users, it's about downloads, it's about monetizing your app. And we have some stats here, particularly we have research, very credible research from One Platform Foundation estimates that you will get more than double the downloads if you listed in just Google Play. So submitting your app to alternative app stores, double the downloads than if you just stuck with Google Play. So let's get back to a couple of key takeaways here. How do you cash in on the benefits? Number one, be smart. You know, use your time, your energy, your resources. This is your business. So what are you going to do? You have an opportunity presents itself. Yes, you can get more downloads by listing an alternative app stores. But are you going to take the time? Do you have the bandwidth to do it? So therefore, be smart about it. Think it through. Choose a partner. Choose a company. Code and Go is one. There are others. Look at the companies that fit your business and partner and do this and take advantage of this opportunity. Do it wisely because if you distribute through these channels, there's a big return, but there's also a, you know, there's a price for everything. It's uh, you know, friction and time versus the rewards. Number two. I want to be really clear about this. This is not, you know, publish it and start, you know, counting the money. It's you have to have patience here, but that's the point. There is a reward if you are patient. So it's not going to come overnight, but um, there are observations, and I want to draw your attention to this one from uh, Inmobi, an executive I interviewed when I was writing the Aponomics book in partnership with Inmobi, and I want to just read this. This is pretty interesting because Inmobi was witnessing somewhere between a five times and a 10 times, so 5x and 10x impact on downloads. I'll leave you with this quote because I think this sums it up really, really well. App download campaigns within third-party app stores give developers another channel to influence the downloads of their app and provides a bigger bang for their dollars because they are very often paying much less for the downloads in third-party app stores 
than they would if they did this through Google Play. More bang for the buck, Rob. What can I say? Well, it's just solid business advice. You've already built the assets. Why not distribute on multiple app stores and especially in Android? As we said, iOS, you're lost. You have one loop. You have one place to put it. But with Android, there are alternatives. And I don't understand why people don't look at it. And I think that if you really want to capitalize on this, it's a good recommendation for Code and Go. So uh, I think that's at codeandgo.com, C-O-D-E-N-G-O.com. Is that correct? Yeah, that's the place. So just go to Code and Go and, and take a look at the service because if, if you spend a buck and you can actually generate more income than spending a buck, you know, you it's a good investment, I would say. Well, I mean, it goes back to what we're talking about here, Rob. It's all about merchandising. Your app is an app, but it's also a product. It's not really a whole lot different than, you know, detergents or anything else out there. So so would you go to one store? Would you just say, hey, I'm just going to go to Walmart and that's it. I don't want to be anywhere else. No, there's lots of department stores. Check them out. Explore them. You know, go to a company like Code and Go. Go to one that fits your business model. There are companies and services that are out there. The point is just... You look beyond the immediate suspects, the usual suspects, and build your business. Totally agree. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Peggy. We'll see you next week for another Mobile App Minute. Don't forget to come back next week for our next episode.